All right, so the recording has begun. Um, we will pray and we will get right into today's session. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. Father, thank you for enlightening us, oh God. Father, through the um, uh, Lord, the knowledge of your word. Father, as we delve deeper into the book of Acts, we pray that Lord, um, we would be able to receive everything, Lord, that you want to speak to us by your Holy Spirit. Father, we commit ourselves into your hands. We pray that you will guide and lead, O oh God, this entire time. Father, we also ask your blessings upon um, each one of us, Lord, all the students, all the listeners and their families, Father God. We pray that, uh, Lord, uh, all of us will will experience your glory in a, in a tangible and in a fresh way, Lord. Thank you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, yeah, so uh, uh, happy and delighted that each of you has rejoined, you know, this class. Um, uh, you've completed your second year and here you are in your third year. Uh, and I'm sure you must be enjoying all the different classes. Uh, that, that you're having. It's uh, a really rich year, uh, so to speak. Every year is, but you know, this particular year you will be studying from so many books of the Bible, verse by verse. So that's a, a wonderful opportunity, and I really encourage you to make complete use of it. Um, and uh, it, you know, it'll strengthen your faith and also establish you in God's word. So uh, today, in this course, we are going to look at uh, Acts of the Apostles. Um, I hope you have had a look at the um, overview of this course. If yes, you could let me know. I had posted the course overview in the classwork page. Uh, please have a look. Basically, it um, talks about what we will be using to study this course. We will go with the Bible, and generally, you know, when uh, I, I quote, I quote from the NKJV version, and uh, primarily we will use a commentary called as "Enduring Word," written by David Kozik. So you could also refer to this commentary for. Uh, you know some of the insights that I, I will be sharing during this class. So uh, at the moment, I'm not giving you uh, any notes. Um, we'll see. Like if there are specific subjects where notes may be required, then I would post the notes before the class. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, as far as the assessments are concerned, there are two assessments that you will have. One. Um, mid-semester assessment and a final assessment. Uh, and please make sure that you attempt these assessments and also um, are able to get passing marks and you know not just passing marks, but uh, really good marks in your assignments. OK. Uh, anything else, any other questions before we start, start going into the content? Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, I think you you asked uh, how uh, we are all doing. Yes, to that's find right. out uh, how you are doing. Oh. And, uh, what are some of the things that have happened over the last, uh, uh, you know, six months or you know, sorry, three or four months that you know we have uh, last met you? Yes. Oh, thanks, uh, Christopher. Thank you for uh, checking about me. Uh, well, yeah, uh, the last three months have flown by quite quick. Um, uh, I've been, you know, more occupied with uh, uh, the, the North Church, the church where I serve as an associate pastor. So more engaged with the activities of uh, the North Church because, you know, Bible College wasn't happening. So then it gave us uh, that much more time. So uh, yeah, that that was one area that I was focusing on quite a bit, and. Apart from that, uh, many other things that are happening in church 
as uh, you are aware, we are restarting our mission trips. Uh, so across India, that is, uh, this would be for the um, APC Bangalore congregation. Um, so we we have uh, just put out those the list of the mission trips and you know working on coordinating uh, these uh, outreaches. And one more very exciting thing that recently happened is we had a time together with all our outreach pastors from India. So they had come down to Bangalore, they as well as their families. Uh, and you know we got to spend three days, all the Bangalore pastors and all the outreach pastors and their families. So it was truly a refreshing and a strengthening time. So this, as far as work is concerned, that yeah, otherwise all fine, you know, personally doing well. Thank you so much, Christopher, for asking. Yes, uh, and of course, you know, we've uh, been preparing for the Bible College and very excited, very excited about the semester and the year. It'll be a year for you and, you know, uh, as in this semester, the next would make a year, the third year for all of you. So I'm excited as as faculty, but I'm excited for you as students. Uh, so may the Lord strengthen you as you study his word. Okay, so uh, coming to the subject of uh, Acts of the Apostles, before we delve deep into uh, this book of the Bible, I just wanted your opinion, like when you think of Acts, what is it that that uh, comes to you first? Hi, Pastor. Hi, everyone. I think about power uh -huh. and the Holy Spirit. I think about that. That comes off the top of my head. Yeah. So that's what I, I think about. Fire, power, the Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Daisha. Fire, power, Holy Spirit. And Subhaji has mentioned in the chat, signs and wonders, of course. Say, I can see your hand raised. Yes, uh, for me, um, I would see the book of Acts as the Holy Spirit walking through ordinary men to do extraordinary things. Amen. That's right. So the work of the Holy Spirit through ordinary men doing extraordinary works. Kishan, please go ahead. Yes, for me, ma'am, encouragement and boldness. Wow. Okay. That's nice. Thank you for sharing that. Louis, what would you like to add? Uh, I think I want to question why it was called the book of Acts of the Apostles. Why not the books of, why not the Acts of the Church? Because basically that's how it started at the upper room. It was just that um, the records pointed more to what the uh, apostles did. Because in, in hindsight, you, you hear people like uh, Philip, um, other people that were highlighted, you know. So maybe if we just, we can question that a bit in the class and come to a conclusion why it was called um, basically the Acts of the Apostles. Hmm. So uh, it's what you are saying. It's it's more of a question, isn't it? That just yeah, that maybe a question, but on the in, just an insight. Uh, we've come to accept it as the Acts of the Apostles, but if you read it in context, um, it highlighted the things the Apostles did. It also highlighted that they had, um, like when Peter, they said they went to their own company. So that means they had their own groups where they had uh, micro fellowships. Um, Mm -hmm. So in that in that sense, um, it, it we could call it the acts of, of the church because basically the apostles are still part of the church. Mm -hmm. um, when Paul writes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when Paul writes, he says greets the the church at, at, at this place or to build the church in this person's household or build the church. So they were just that um, that combination of both the apostles and the church at large. Mm -hmm. Because when Peter was uh, captured, was the church that was free. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Louis. I yeah. think I like that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, I got the essence of what you're saying. So you're you're saying that I could, uh, you know, it, it's beyond just the acts of the apostles, but you know, there are others uh, who are involved who are not apostles, and the Holy Spirit work 
to death as well, which is why uh, it could have probably been called the Acts of the Church. Now, uh, we will see that um, it could be called so many other names. Uh, uh, wonderful that uh, Kennedy has mentioned here, birthing of the church. Yes, of course, it could have been called the Acts of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit worked uh, through people's lives. So yes, it could have been called so many of those different names, but uh, anyway, it, it has been named the Acts of the Apostles. So I'll quickly give a, a turn to uh, everyone who's raised their hands, uh, but I request us to keep it very brief, please. Yes, uh, success. Do you want to say something? Okay, I'm not too sure if he's able to hear me. Uh, all right, let's just move on to uh, uh, Christopher. Christopher, uh, what would you like to say? Yeah, I'd just like to say that um, it's actually quite similar to you know what the other other students have mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the 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 key uh, words that come to mind is you know this personal transformation mm. that uh, has taken place, where um, uh, even though the apostles and uh, other people who who actually you know, spent time with Jesus. Uh, they was, you know, they they still sort of, you know, had a lot of doubts. Uh, they did not have, you know, that uh, you know that sense of uh, living up, uh, you know, in the way, you know, you know, with the Holy Spirit. And uh, because of the Holy Spirit, you know, they were transformed. And mm. uh, that's that's where you know I think uh, it made such a big difference, uh, particularly in the in the early days of the church. Yes, true. Thank you, uh, Christopher. Thank you for sharing those thoughts. Um, right. So, uh, good morning. Yes, success. Good morning. Did you have something to share as well? Oh, yeah. So, you are talking about the book of Acts of Apostles. Yes. Uh, to me, the book of Apostles is the book of demonstration of power of God. Mm -hmm. If we look at the book of Apostles chapter 12, it proves to all the people in the world that God is involved in the, in the, in the life of those who are genuinely seeking. Mm -hmm. okay, There's sure. a place I, I understand very well, I, I love very well that these people, when they ask, when Peter put hand on the fire, people think it's the fire is going to burn, but it proved to them the demonstration of power of God. And that's what every Christian should look onto. Thank you. Thank you. Success, the demonstration of God's mighty power. We have a few more comments here in the chat section. I'll go over them. Rose uh, says, Jesus turning over the mission to his followers and start of worldwide spread of the gospel from there on. Also, the demonstration of signs and wonders as the Lord backs up the truth of the gospel, making the unbelievers believe. Uh, that's uh, very true. Ashalani uh, miracles and about the witnesses and also how God uses the apostles and also the good news of Jesus Christ being spread. Uh, Abhishek shares people are turning towards Jesus by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the book of Acts is, you know, if I could just um, play on the word Acts, it's action-packed. So there's so much happening here. There's personal transformation. As somebody mentioned, there's the power, the fire, the authority of the church, the birth of the church. Know, the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the believers, the uh, widespread mission of the church being accomplished, um, and uh, people turning to the Lord, uh, which is most exciting about the book of Acts. So in this first session, uh, my intention is to just give us a little bit of a background or an overview of the book of Acts. Uh, and then, you know, we will begin with chapter one. We will try and go over the, you know, the book chapter by chapter and verse by verse as much as possible. And the plan is to ideally try and fit in two chapters in a, in a 
um, in a week, but uh, some some portions, you know, I might go a little faster, and some portions might take a little longer. But you know, by the time we finish the book of Acts, we will be able to complete the twenty-eight chapters. So. Um, the book of Acts, as many of you have already pointed out, uh, it's more of the acts of the Holy Spirit through God's people, God's people, including the apostles, as well as the believers. So the work of the Holy Spirit, you could say, through the church. Then the book of Acts is the 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 uh, manifestation you know of god's power uh, that has been handed over to the church now we know when jesus finally completed his mandate here on the earth he um, gave us the great commission and he asked us to go and make disciples of all nations and the great commission began to be fulfilled through the book of Acts, or at least that's where we see it unfold. So the ministry that Jesus gave the believers is actually uh, unfolding in the book of Acts. All right. Now, the beautiful thing about the book of Acts is that it is like a bridge between the Gospels and the Epistles. So just think with me, if we had just the Gospels, no book of Acts, and then we start off with uh, the book of Romans, there'll be so many questions unanswered. We would be wondering, who is this Paul? And, you know, why is he writing to the Romans? And how does he know uh, about the Lord Jesus? And what is the authority that he carries? And we would have absolutely no idea about how the uh, seed shifted from the Lord Jesus walking with his disciples here on the earth, going through his, uh, you know, fiery trial. And what happened after that? How is it that you have people like Paul on the scene now? So the book of Acts really is a bridge between the Gospels and the Epistles. The book of Acts uh, uh, it extends over a period of 30 years, so three decades. You know, we are going to cover 28 chapters in about three months, but the time span that we are going to study through is actually uh, spaced over 30 years. So God um, birthed the church on the day of Pentecost, and so many things began to take place. You know? Uh, over those 30 years, there were many churches planted, many leaders raised up. Uh, and so uh, God's work was accomplished in a mighty fashion over 30 years. Okay, So uh, the, uh, the time would be like from somewhere around 33 AD, which is roughly around the time when the Lord Jesus was crucified, uh, to about, you know, 60 to 63 AD. That's the duration of the book of Acts. And uh, this book was lit written uh, a little later, a little after 62 AD. Uh, and I'll share with you, you know, why this book could have been written. So any guesses about who the writer of the book of Acts is? Luke. OK, Luke. excellent. Oh, okay, so all of you have 100 points on that correct answer. So Luke is the writer of the book of Acts. A little bit about Luke. Luke, he um, was a physician. He was a Gentile. And in the way he wrote an account of the life of Jesus, uh, it helps us see that he is you know, somewhat uh, 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 a historian with all the detailed information that he compiled uh, about the life of Jesus. He's also uh, a Christian teacher, we could say, uh, simply because whatever he wrote, you know, it instilled faith in uh, the, the Godhead. 
the Lord Jesus uh, and his uh, works, his teachings, but also you know, the, the work of the Holy Spirit and the uh, work of the Father. So he, he was a Christian teacher is also uh, what we could say. So he is the one who has written this book. And we would see that the styles of writing both these books uh, is somewhat similar. Uh, he is giving an account of the life of Jesus initially. And then he gives an account of what unfolds after the ascension of Jesus. Now, Luke wrote this book to a man called Theophilus. So we, it, you would see that very early on uh, in the book of Acts. Let me quickly read that verse for us. So uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So he's writing to an individual called Theophilus. And, uh, um, you know, Bible scholars say that Theophilus was probably a man with influence, a man who carried some kind of uh, governmental responsibility. Why was Luke writing to this person? Reason one would be that Theophilus was a believer and uh, Luke wanted him to grow in his faith. So that is why Luke was writing to him. Second reason could be that this governmental authority that Theophilus carried uh, might mean that he had a role to play uh, in the trial of Paul. Uh, so I told us that this book was written you know, um, somewhere uh, around you know 62 63 AD so that was the time when apostle paul was undergoing a trial and he was soon to be taken before nero uh, and you know uh, tried for for all the accusations against him so uh, it's likely that luke was writing up a defense to prove that paul is actually innocent so he might have wanted to first explain about the life of Jesus and then go on to write about how Apostle Paul came to know the Lord Jesus and uh, all the ministry which Apostle Paul did and to just point out to the governing authorities that he did nothing against the law of the land. So that might be another reason why Luke was writing to Theophilus. Now, there are uh, people who say that the book of Luke and the book of Acts were sort of in continuation. So when they wrote out, when Luke wrote it out on a scroll, it, it was almost like, you know, the, the scroll of Luke, the book of Luke uh, was followed by the scroll of the book of Acts. So it was probably written in that manner and it was written as a defense for Paul. So this is the second reason. The third reason why the book of Acts uh, was written, uh, people consider this, this individual, Theophilus, and say, Theophilus, if you translate that uh, um, term, that word, Theo is God, and Phyllis refers to lover, lover of God. So uh, it, it was um, very symbolic. So Luke was writing to people who loved God uh, and, and giving a, uh, a, a very detailed account of the life of Jesus and the unfolding of God's work <coughs> excuse me, in the early church. Uh, so these are uh, you know, some of the reasons why this book was written. OK. so. Um, Success, I can see your hand raised. Did you have a question or uh, is, did I miss something? Okay, so we'll uh, carry on. Right, so now we have an idea about when the book was written, why it could have been written, and um, who it was written to.
So Luke, as he begins the book of Acts, you know, he starts uh, with this statement uh, in verse uh, 2. He says, about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. So Luke is building that bridge. You know, after the death of Jesus, his resurrection, uh, we read about that in the Gospels. Now, after the resurrection, you know, what happened? He says, about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. So he also is talking about everything that Jesus did during that period of him uh, spending time with his disciples here on the earth before he goes up into heaven to be with the Father. And you know, from then on, uh, we have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is spoken of in Acts chapter 2, uh, which we refer to as the birth of the early church. And you know, then uh, the, the entire um, uh, work of the Holy Spirit begins to unfold. Now, let's continue to see what else do we find in the book of Acts. So we have an idea now uh, about you know, how this book uh, came to be. Now, what are the uh, what are some of the very significant themes that we would find in the book of Acts? So in this book, we would see the work of the Holy Spirit uh, initially through the apostles, okay? Uh, and in the latter portion of the book, it would be more of the work of the Holy Spirit through the apostle Paul. So. The apostles of the Lord Jesus are the ones that uh, uh, you know you you see early on in the book, but later on it's more through the life of Jesus. And in some portions in between, you have an overlap of of uh, the apo the apostles of Jesus as well as Paul. Then uh, we see here uh, the moving of the gospel from Jerusalem to various parts of the region at that time. Okay. Uh, yes, Sri Kumar, you wanted to say something? Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I just have a, a one question. I have one question. Um, the guess you were saying that uh, 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 if you read the book of Acts, so um, we can see the, the work of the Apostle Paul. And also with very few incidents, we can also see Peter and John and also a few other names uh, is highlighted there. So I just want to know that uh, why the why the Acts is not recorded uh, in the Acts, like uh, other disciples, like Thomas was there, and other disciples was there, which is um, which is not mentioned. Even um, Matthias, whose name was picked up by the, um, you know, through the, um, the lot in the book of Acts, um, when we read, so um, even though they were used by uh, uh, by God, but um, why the why the why the Luke has not mentioned their ministries? Is there a specific reason? Uh, I just want to know. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Shrikumar. Very good question there. So why aren't other apostles mentioned? Why aren't other leaders, volunteers of the church mentioned? Uh, and in fact, I was going to say this and I probably will say it again. Other churches are also not mentioned. You have some churches uh, that are uh, that have the focus, like the Church of Jerusalem, the Church of Andia, Antioch, and then the churches that Paul uh, planted across the region. But we also are aware, you know, as we go through the Book of Acts, that there were many other thriving churches in the region. They are also not mentioned. Now, why? Question is why? So I feel there could be two reasons. One, as I already told us, that uh, this book of Acts was probably written as a defense brief to be given to uh, the officials who, who were in charge of Paul's trial. So, Luke had a focus, and that is why you see that initially he's talking about everybody, and then it's about Paul, 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 you know, Paul said this, Paul did this, and more about Paul. So that is one. 
Second uh, reason is uh, historians say that the books of the Bible, even if you consider the Gospels and the Epistles, they have a certain length. Uh, and uh, Acts could be one of the longer books compared to the other New Testament uh, books. It seems like they all limited their writing to the length of the scrolls because it was very difficult to carry um, you know, heavy uh, scrolls. We, we know that in those times, that's the way they would write and uh, trans, transfer, transmit information. So uh, probably you know, they, Luke would have had to think, what should I pick? What should I uh, omit? And he had to make a decision. So while there are many, many such, uh, uh, you know, a lot of other churches and leaders, uh, he just focused on what we have in the book of Acts. Okay. Uh, and again, we know that it's by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that the canon of scripture has come together. So we go by this as the word of God, which has, uh, uh, you know, scriptural authority. Every other reading that we find, it could be a historical report, it could be a cultural, geographical report. Uh, we would look at that as extra biblical uh, information. So uh, I hope that helps, Shri Kumar. Yeah, Any yeah. other follow up questions? Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, okay, right. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Nangi. Thank you, Pastor. Um, following Brother Shikumar's question, um, is, it, is it possible we can add a, th a third theory that says, uh, in the beginning, he wrote about other disciples because he was uh, in contact with churches in, of Jerusalem and other disciples. And then when Paul came into picture to, to start preaching, he he traveled with, with Paul. That's why he had uh, Paul's information and he didn't have other disciples the information uh possible yeah thank you Maggie. possible because we know that he was luke was a travel companion to apostle paul so obviously he had more information about paul as compared to other people so yeah so that also could be one of the reasons okay great so it's really good you know this is how we we are trying to paint a picture and learn and get a background of the book of acts uh, and I was saying, you know, in, in uh, talking about the themes in the book of Acts, I said that initially uh, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit through the apostles is what uh, is put forward. And in the latter part, it's more about the work of the Holy Spirit through the apostle Paul. And then, you know, I said that uh, uh, the book of Acts, geographically, you see uh, the the great commission or the pattern of the great commission unfolding through the book of acts we know that uh, jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel make disciples of all nations so uh, here as you go from chapter one you know, all the way uh, to chapter 28 you would see that initially a lot of ministry happens in the church of jerusalem okay? uh, and then Eventually, ministry is happening in places like Judea, Samaria, and later on, you know, as you see from Acts 13 onwards, when you have Paul uh, in the picture, Barnabas in the picture, the, the ministry is taken out you know, to regions uh, in Asia Minor and uh, uh, modern day Europe. So, uh, as Acts 1 8 says, right, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Of course, they did not reach the ends of the earth, but it was kind of the beginning of taking the word out, taking the gospel out to people who have never heard it. So uh, geographically, we see that the, the extension right, of the, the kingdom of God or the, the church was happening in the book of Acts. So yeah. So that is also something that we could look at. So I have a small table here, which I have taken from, I have the reference as well. I'll quickly share the screen with us. Some more things for us to note.
Okay, I hope you can all see this. Yeah, and as I just stated, the Great Commission is being fulfilled through God's people and uh, Acts 1.8, what Jesus uh, promised his disciples is seen in the book of Acts. And here you would see uh, some of the major personalities who are involved in the work of the gospel uh, in each of these phases and uh, the regions where the gospel reaches and also the communities that it touches. So initially, it's Peter and John who are doing their ministry in Jerusalem and the ethnic group that they witness to is the Jews. Uh, and later, it's uh, Greek-speaking Jews. You have people like Philip and Stephen who minister the regions would be Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea, uh, the audience, the Jews, Samaritans, and the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, later, you have Paul and Peter uh, who come on scene. The regions that they cover are Damascus, Judea, Antioch, Jerusalem, and Asia. Uh, you have the audience as Jews, God-fearing Gentiles, and also you know, uh, other communities, pagans. Uh, Paul the missionary, Europe and Asia Minor, the audience being Gentiles and Jews. Paul as a prisoner, very interesting. Even when he is a prisoner, uh, ministry is happening through his life. And God's word over his life that he would stand before kings, that he would stand before you know people of influence, that is still uh, taking place when Paul is a prisoner. So he ministers in Judea, in Jerusalem, Caesarea and Rome, Rome being one of uh, the very important cities at that time, God helped Paul take the gospel even to the influential leaders there. So he is able to minister to the Gentile rulers, the Gentiles and the Jews. So you see how there are different people involved in different parts of uh, the region and they are reaching out to various communities. And this is but a start or a beginning of what God was doing through his people. Okay, uh, so we've seen that now. We also, as I said earlier, that there are, um, you know, so many other churches that have not been talked about, so many other men and women of God who have not been talked about. Uh, so there are, we, I mean, uh, it's not included in the book of Acts, but here's the understanding that a lot more was taking place in these three decades, not just what has been uh, shared with us in the book of Acts. So that is also something you and I need to bear in mind the way Jesus promised that the believers who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, that they would be his witnesses. We know that there were believers who went out and who planted to different churches. So Antioch is one of them. When you study about the church of Antioch, we do not know, you know who that individual was or who those group uh, of individuals were who planted that church. So it was just some believer, some unnamed, unknown believer who planted the church of Antioch. And similarly, there would have been so many other churches that were planted. So uh, this, this period, the 30 years, we need to understand that so much was taking place through the Holy Spirit um, and the lives of the believers. So the book of Acts, though it's not mentioned, it's understood that uh, it, it is definitely a mighty work of God which was unfolding through the early church. Now, the book of Acts is also the work of the early church, right? the ministry of the early church, uh, as we see it. Uh, but one additional thing that I want to tell us is that it hasn't stopped. When you read the last chapter of the book of Acts, which is chapter 28, the ending is very abrupt. Now, again, there is much uh, talk about why the ending is abrupt. You know, Paul was in Rome and uh, he, we don't 
really know what his trial before Nero looked like. The book ends before that. But then, you know, many, many uh, Christians say that it has this abrupt ending, but it's probably God telling us that the work of the Holy Spirit through his people has not ended. So you and I today are a continuation of the book of Acts. Because God, what did God introduce himself as? He said, I I am the great I am. He's not the great I was. So even today, God is at work and God is at work through us. And uh, you would find you know, uh, different ministries named as Acts 29. Okay, it's simply to signify what God is doing today. And the Holy Spirit is still here with us. And he's the same Holy Spirit who worked through his apostles and believers in the times of the book of Acts. And he continues to work through us. And so the book of Acts has actually not been completed. The Acts of the believers, the Acts of the church, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, right? which are unfolding here on the face of the earth. So this is like a quick uh, uh, you know, overview with some highlights that we see in the book of Acts. Uh, now, if you just want to look at it, you know, from um, go over the chapters, in the book of Acts and say, okay, you know, what exactly was happening, you would find that from uh, chapter one till about um, chapter eight, so it's more of the church of Jerusalem and many of the people from the church of Jerusalem that you would see ministering here, Peter, John, Philip, Stephen. Uh, so these are all the, the men of God who you see there. But from Acts chapter 9, you have a dramatic entry of uh, a, a, you know, a, a persecutor who is transformed into a child of God and you know, he has a call of God on his life and uh, he is the Apostle Paul. So then you read more about the Apostle Paul from the uh, uh, from chapter 9 onwards. Uh, but then, you know, there is a little bit of an overlap of the ministry of Peter over there. And then you would also read a little bit about the church of Antioch. And eventually, when we come to um, Acts chapter 13, that is the place where you see the Holy Spirit asking Paul and Barnabas to be um, uh, to be called particularly for more of a missionary role. Okay? Uh, and so you know, Paul and Barnabas are uh, sent to uh, sent on their missionary journeys. And from then on, you, know, you see the three missionary journeys of Apostle Paul unfold. So uh, uh, throughout, you know, throughout, till about uh, the uh, 28th chapter, we just go over the missionary journeys of Apostle Paul. We also see how he plants different churches, how he oversees different churches, how he raises up leaders, how he uh, is accused by um, the Romans, and how uh, he, he finally is moving from one court to the other and he's being taken up you know, into higher courts uh, uh, till he is brought to Rome where he needs uh, to face Nero and give a defense for himself. So uh, this is how the chapters look and you know, the, the story, if you, if you uh, will, uh, is seen in all these 28 chapters. So I'll pause for a moment. Uh, would you have any questions or any uh, comments to add to what I have just shared? Please feel free to unmute and uh, talk. All right, so if you 
uh, don't have anything to say, I will quickly share another way of, uh, you know, looking at the book of Acts. Okay, so, you know, you, you, there are layers and layers. You can look at it in so many different ways because so much is happening here. So I'll quickly share the screen. Yeah, here it is. So I just talked about um, all the 28 chapters and what takes place. This is another way of describing you know, these 28 chapters. So from chapter 1 um, till chapter 2, the preparation of the Christian mission, then uh, chapter 2 to chapter 8, the mission in Jerusalem, chapter 8 and 9, the mission in Judea and Samaria, chapter 10 to chapter 15, the inauguration of the Gentile mission. So you see there's a shift, right? There's a shift where the gospel is now going beyond the Jewish community. Okay? So the Gentile mission. Uh, begins to unfold and from chapter midway of chapter 15 you know, when the council of uh, Jerusalem meets you see more of the mission to the ends of the earth so mission of Paul to the ends of the earth so this is another way of uh, describing what takes place from chapter 1 to chapter 28 and I'm sure you can come up with so many other you know uh, themes that you find in the book of Acts. So as you research, you will find, you know, people describe it uh, differently each time. Uh, but that is the beauty of the book of Acts. So at this point, let's uh, go ahead and take a break. Uh, 10 minutes, we will come back and we will begin with studying chapter one of the book of Acts. Uh, all the online students, I request you to uh, don't uh, get off the call. You can simply unmute yourselves and put your camera off and just rejoin the call uh, after 10 minutes. So we will meet at 10 a.m. Thank you. <laughs> 